I just found out I am pregnant and I am at risk. What are my options regarding testing the baby? Well, good question. And congratulations to whoever sent this question in that you're pregnant. There's two primary options at this point is to find out about the status or not find out about the status of the baby. And it depends on what you want to do. <clears throat> Many people just choose to start their families and have their lives and hope that science will catch up by the time that their child is old enough that they would be impacted by Huntington's disease. And that seems to be the first statement that a lot of people make to me. And then I feel like a bad guy because I have to bring up this thing where I say, but just remember too, then that means that your child might have to watch you become sick too. And so the first question this person should probably ask themselves is do they want to know their own status, right? Do they need to know? And if they don't want to know their own status and they still want to know about the, the fetus's status, there's theoretically ways to do that. I, it's been very, very difficult over the past five years to find labs that will do that work. It involves getting blood samples from different family members so that they can trace which gene is going where, and it's not a straightforward process. The bigger question comes up too of like, okay, there's a test for prenatal diagnosis at 10 to 12 weeks called chorionic villus sampling, CVS, where they can test the fetus find out whether or not it inherited the Huntington's disease gene expansion. Or they can do a test called the amniocentesis between about 14 and 20 weeks of, of um, pregnancy. With the amniocentesis, they're taking some of the fluid that's around the outside of the baby that actually has cells that have sloughed off the baby's skin that are in that fluid. With chorionic villus sampling, which is the earlier test, 10 to 12 weeks, that's where they're taking some of the tissue that's developing into the placenta that also is the same as the, the baby. And so they can genetically test that to find out. Question is now, what do you do with that information? Are you planning on terminating your pregnancy or are you planning on continuing your pregnancy? And this is a big question because as a genetic counselor, I have a code of ethics that says I'm not supposed to test anybody under the age of 18 for an adult onset disorder. That human being deserves the right to grow up and make their own decision. And we do all know that like 90 to 95% of people at risk for Huntington's disease were choosing not to test. That might be changing now over time, but still the majority of people choose not to test. And so my feeling is I'm going to test this baby and you're just going to, so you can just know, and that person may grow up and have not wanted to know. So it's a very complicated conversation. I have to be honest, it, most people, once they have, we have this discussion, like I'm talking, I'm sharing now, most people decide not to pursue prenatal diagnosis unless they're a hundred percent certain they just can't possibly pass on Huntington's disease. It's not something they can live with and they can terminate the pregnancy. So those are really kind of the two options are really continue your pregnancy and hope that, you know, science catches up and prenatal diagnosis. Yeah.